Welcome guys to another Blender tutorial and today we're going to be looking at a new feature in Blender 3.0 which is the Asset Browser. Essentially it allows you to create a library of anything, in this case I'm using shaders as an example, that is built into Blender essentially. You can you know, select a file path somewhere where you have some assets stored and every time you open up Blender you'll have those assets available. So in this case you can see here I have some shaders that's in my library and I can just drag them from my library into my scene and they'll automatically be added to whatever I drag them on. So maybe I want to take some of this, put it on there, and it's just really, really cool. It's definitely a time saver. So I'm going to go through the whole process now and I'll be explaining how we set up the folder that it's going to be referencing, so the file path, and um, it really is a lot easier than you guys think. So definitely keep watching and hopefully it's a useful tutorial. <laughs> So the way this works, like I've mentioned, is essentially you're gonna have a blend file that is saved somewhere on your system, and our asset browser is gonna be referencing that blend file so we can import assets. In this case, we're gonna be primarily focusing on materials, and that's a very useful thing to have. So you can see here on my desktop, I have a blend file called materials collection, and I have it open here in Blender 3.0. That's actually very important. And you can see the scene here doesn't matter so much, but the fact is that this has all these different materials in here. Now these are some different materials I've created in this blend file, um, just by going to the shading workspace and making the materials myself, and by also going to file and just appending from other blend files. So I've, you know, it's super simple. You just click append, you append in some materials. So whatever the, you do, as long as you just have your materials in this blend file, you can add as many as you want, right? All you have to do is in Blender 3.0, you have to select each one of these materials. So you select your materials and you right click and you should see an option here called Mark Asset. Now in my case, it's kind of grayed out because I've already done it. But if say for example, I, you know, come and I click here on the plus and I create a new material and let me call it, um, let me call it test, okay? Just a test or an example, right? So you're gonna click on it, and I'm gonna just, you know, let's just make something. So now I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna right click on this new material, and you're gonna see there's an option called, is called mark assets. I'm gonna mark that asset. And now I'm gonna go file, and I'm gonna make sure to save this. Remember, this is our reference folder. And then we wanna also make sure to go down to external data, click on a little tick, so it's also automatically gonna pack resources into this blend file. That's particularly important, especially if you're gonna be referencing any sort of textures or maps, then that's gonna be very important. So once you've done that, you've packed it in, you've saved it, you now have a, you know, a scene here, a blend file on your desktop or wherever on your computer that is your reference. And then what you're gonna do, let's just open up a fresh scene in Blender 3.0. And let's just, you know, just for example's sake, I'm gonna just add in you know, a monkey, duplicate it a few times just to demonstrate. And let's come down here to our timeline and just drag it up. And then click on our editor type and let's go and add in the asset browser. You should be able to see it if you have Blender 3.0. And you know, if we were to go now to our shading to look for materials, we're not gonna see anything. So we need to actually add it. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go to edit. I'm gonna click on preferences and simply go down to your file paths. This is super easy. You're gonna click on the little plus down here under the asset browser, and then you can call it what you want. Let's call it materials, okay? And now all you have to do is simply click on a folder, and in this case, it's on my desktop, but you can pick whatever you want. So I'm selecting the desktop. That's where I have that um, collection of, you know, that materials collection. I'm gonna go ahead and click accept. And I'm gonna close this. And at the moment you won't see anything because you have to come here to the current file and under the custom, click on that custom folder we created, which is materials. And now all of a sudden, all of these materials that are in this materials collection are now in my asset library. And all I have to do is just select them and drag them onto objects to add them. So now if I hit Z and I just go to my material preview, you can see that the monkey now has that material. Maybe I want the cube here to be a gold. So I'm gonna drag it onto there. Take one of these tiled ones, maybe drag it onto this monkey here. And then maybe one of these on here. And that's super easy. Now I have a library here. And if I open up Blender in the future, because I've saved that, I've gone to edit and preferences and I've chosen that file path, it'll do it every time. And not only can you do this with materials, it's really powerful. You can do it with geometry, you can do it with objects. In this case, I'm, I've only chosen to do it with materials because I don't like cre creating materials over every time. When I'm done with a scene, I've put a lot of effort in, I just wanna 
drag in my materials um, real quick. And having this asset browser is a game changer. It's really putting Blender on par with a lot of other softwares that have come before it that have a little bit of a better reputation for um, having better asset browsers. So this is a really, really good development. I'm really happy to see this in Blender and I hope you guys are able to enjoy this. I hope this tutorial has explained it well and uh, stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.